Perry is having a colonoscopy live on the air this morning. This, as you know, can be a life-saving procedure, and he is the first anchor to have this done live on network TV. He's getting prepped as we speak at the nurse's station at New York Presbyterian Weill Cornell Medical Center. That's just about one mile from our studio. And with him throughout the morning is CBS Evening News anchor Katie Couric, who famously televised her colonoscopy. And Katie, I remember back then, we saw a dramatic rise in the number of colonoscopies. They called it the Couric effect. This morning, we're going for the Smith effect, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, morning, everybody. It's great to be here. We're here with uh, Katie, of course, and uh, Lisa's uh, taking my blood pressure just to prove to America that a heart does, in fact, beat inside <laughs> here. Oh, here we go. Uh, it was very important what you did. Uh, it was back in 2000, right. right? And there really was a change, and there's so much that needs to be demythified about the process of having a colonoscopy. Because one of the things that we know is if people get the procedure, it can really save lives. That's right. You know, 150,000 people are diagnosed every year, year in this country with colorectal cancer, the second leading cancer killer of men and women. It affects women almost as often as men. But if you are screened and do undergo a colonoscopy or another screening method, there are other options, but this is really considered the gold standard. Mm -hmm. It has a 92% cure rate. So it is so critical that you stop colon cancer in its tracks. And this is really the best way to do it. And I'm so proud of Harry for doing this live. <laughs> I told him he looked really thin this morning after the prep because it's like a spa treatment, right? It in a, a way, it kind is. of his own colonic. And uh, we really wanted people to do it, both of us, I think, together to understand that it isn't such a big deal. It's not painful. It's really easy. And, um, you know, it's, it's a no-brainer, as you, you've said here. And this is so personal for you, and, and, and so much of what this is about for you is your own personal journey because you lost your husband in 1998 to uh, uh, colorectal cancer. And so we started our journey yesterday at the Monaghan Center just across the street. So this is the Monaghan Center. I couldn't have taken my journey without the example set by Katie Couric. Katie's husband, Jay Monaghan, was diagnosed with colon cancer in 1997. We went from place to place. He had to have some radiology, and he had to actually get some treatment for his eyes. He had to get his chemo, of course. Jay and Katie struggled to find treatment options. At the age of 42, Jay lost his battle with colon cancer. There's got to be a better way, a more compassionate, comprehensive way to treat people going through this hell, which it was. Out of her loss, came a commitment to establish a center in Jay's honor to help families deal with prevention, screening, treatment, and support. And as I've watched my daughters develop into really fine people, you know, I always think, gosh, Jay would be so proud of what the people that they become, and he's missed so much. And that's really why I established a center. I don't want other dads or moms, I'm getting kind of emotional, um, to miss their children's uh, growing up. Colon cancer is the second leading cause of death in the U.S. from cancer, with 50,000 deaths each year. So you can have a seat over here. Terrific. I experience some of Katie's vision. Have you had any surgeries? During my initial screening at the J. Monahan Center for Gastrointestinal Health. I feel the way I feel right before I go to sleep. Following Katie's own on-air colonoscopy in 2000, researchers documented a 20% increase in the number of colonoscopies. That wasn't bad at all. And dubbed it the Couric Effect. How are you? Good. Hi, guys. Hello. Here we are again. Katie stopped by to provide some moral support. Well, why don't you go ahead and... Have a little more? Yeah. And give me a bad time. Bottoms up. <laughs> so to speak. We, we I got did. a million of them, Harry. Yeah. <laughs> Let the games begin. You're going to have to get up very early tomorrow, but you're used to that, right? <laughs> yeah, but the, you know what's going to be fun? You'll, you'll, be, you'll be there with me. I'll see you bright and early, but for now, uh, this is Dr. Couric signing off. So here you are in your scrubs with your stethoscope. Yes, I'm not a doctor, but I do I play, play one play on TV. I'm having a little doctor fantasy <laughs> fulfilled this morning, For sure Harry. this morning. I think one of the things we can demythify off the top. Yeah. <laughs> 
don't worry, I'm not going to be involved in the medical aspect of this. <laughs> My worst nightmares yeah, come, really. come to life. Uh, and I can always say for the rest of my life that Katie Kirk hosted <laughs> yeah, my colonoscopy exactly, exactly. On, on, on morning television. But uh, the other thing I want to say, just in terms of the process, so you drink all of this stuff, and you know what? You go to the bathroom a lot. That's really that. And having done this before myself, right? This is this. That was the worst part. Was yeah, last night. Yeah, exactly. A lot of people do say the prep is a bigger pain, not a pain, but right. a, a challenge than the procedure. But as you said, I always tell people, you know, no, it may not be at the top of your to-do list, mm -hmm. but it's a lot better than being diagnosed with colon cancer, which is just something you obviously don't want to have happen to you. And, and this is a very easy way to prevent it. And I, you know, for all of the cancers we talk about so often, day after day after day, and cover on evening news or on, on the early show, it's 150,000 people get diagnosed every year. 50,000 people die. And nothing breaks my heart more than hearing from people who say they were diagnosed with colon cancer because I know they're saying to themselves, if only, mm. if only I had gotten screened, then I wouldn't be in this situation. And that's what we're really trying to educate people about today. So uh, we're going to be back in uh, 25 minutes or so. And yeah. we're going to show you how it's done. And give people information about like yeah. when they need to get mm -hmm. screened, who needs to get screened, does insurance cover it, how yeah. often, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. It's, we're all things colon here this morning. <laughs> Colonoscopy <laughs> Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, guys. We'll Harry, see you in a little while. you're in very good yeah. hands. Thank you so much. And yeah, we're very thank you, proud Maggie. Of you. Yeah, put those gloves away. <laughs> yeah. Get out of here. Don't worry, you won't remember a thing. <laughs> we're gonna get really get down to the bottom of things in just a little so while. To speak. Yeah, right. <laughs> there are so many jokes that go with this, and they, you know, they're well, almost. It's important endless. to have a sense of humor about this. I think in so. fact, yeah, some people were mocking us. Early. Yeah, and this is your very, very good friend, Dr. Yes. Mark Puchapin, Mark who is, is the man. Yes, he is the the director of the Jay Monahan Center. He was Jay's doctor, and he's also chief of endoscopy here at New York Presbyterian, and also one of the finest doctors and people on the planet. You can't do much better than that for an introduction, right? He's wonderful, so you'll, you'll, he'll do a terrific job. And this is a great opportunity for us to do some demythifying, because one of the things, you talk to a guy about, well, my doctor said I need a colonoscopy, and guys are so apt to cop an attitude about it, and one of the things we need to do is say, enough with the attitude, just do, do the procedure. Yeah, I mean, the big question is when you should get it done and people don't realize you get it done when you're healthy. Men don't want to hear that at all. They want to have a symptom, they want to go to a doctor when they're not feeling well. But this disease we can prevent and that's the key but you have to do it when you're well. So by and large anybody the age 50 or over should really be talking to their doctor about screening for colorectal cancer. Now of course there are other reasons to do it earlier. If there's a family history, mm -hmm. like in Jay's case, you know his family now are going to have to have it at a younger age. Starting at, right. Right, starting at 40 or younger. Women can get this disease just as frequently as men. Often women don't realize that. They think this is a man's disease. I don't know why they associate mm -hmm. colons with men, but generally this is not thought of a uh, woman's disease. Because it's almost the same number. Of, exactly. 50, 50. So yes. women need their mammographies, they need their pap smears, they need to see a gynecologist, but they also need to be screened for colorectal cancer. And I always say no family history is no guarantee because 75% of all colon cancers right. are, are first time yeah. in, in a family, so they have no family history. Here's another big deal, though. Health care costs are out of control. Does insurance, as a rule, pay for this? By and large, if your doctor recommends it, insurance will pay for it. There are 33 states that actually mandate it. We applaud those states and actually hope more follow suit because it's really important to focus on prevention. You know, this is a disease that can be so devastating, as we know from personal experience but it can be prevented, and that is the most important message. And the key, Harry, is getting it before it can develop. Mm -hmm. So one of the reasons you get a colonoscopy is because you can actually remove a precancerous or even cancerous polyp right. before it develops into a tumor and permeates the colon wall, goes into the lymph nodes, and metastasizes wow, to Dr. other Kirk organs. Knows what she's talking no, no, about. no, 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 but it's really important because this is one of those cancers yeah. you can actually Actually, stop it in your in its tracks. Nip it in the bud uh, or butt. Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> so Mark's got the scope. He's going to show us yeah, how check this, this works. Out. This is amazing technology. It really is an amazing feat of technology. What we have is a device that can move in four directions: up, down, left, and right. And I'm using my thumb to control these wheels. Mm -hmm. And this little wire you see isn't normally here, but I have it here for demonstration. So if we do see a polyp, we can extend this little. Uh, this, we're pretending this is a polyp. Right. We extend the snare out. David, you want to open the wire? We put this loop of wire around the right. polyp and close. And then normally we'd put a little electric current through, which would cause it to cauterize and cut the polyp off. 
But of course, we're not going to do that now. Yeah, because Harry needs that bigger bar. Please don't. Okay. And we would remove the polyp. So it's diagnostic and therapeutic. We mm -hmm. can remove the polyp and prevent it from ever having a chance of turning cancerous. And the image, Harry, is incredible. Yeah, take For a example, look at this. If we look at your arm, we could see every hair follicle really in Hang absolute um, detail. We could see it coming out of the look skin. Look at there it is. And um, wow. it magnifies. It's kind of grody, actually. Yeah, we yeah. Could even, if you look at the sheet, for example, you could see every weave in the sheet. Isn't that and something? so the amazing wow. thing is we have this high definition mm -hmm. clarity of these scopes and the technology to detect even early and flat polyps and remove them. So we're going to take the colon cam and uh, look inside here in just a <laughs> little right. while. That's right. They're going to get you ready for the procedure, yep. give you some anesthesia, mm -hmm. um, insert the endoscope. I'm going to actually, I love you, but not that much. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to sort of make a quick exit for that part of the procedure, and then mm -hmm. I'm going to join you sort of midway. Right. And, and there's no one who's enjoying this entire experience more than Dave. Oh, I know. Dave, how old are you? Because you're next, buddy. Uh, I am. I've, I've actually had one, and I am uh, 43. So uh, sign me up while you're there, Katie. And keep this in mind, guys. By the way, Katie, a little meteorological fact. We're expecting a full moon over Columbia Presbyterian uh, in just a little while. So uh, if, you, if you look in your, in your direction, Harry, you may be able to see it. Yeah. Hey, no. Dave, I heard when they did your colonoscopy, they actually found your head. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Katie, you've silenced me because anything I say right now would wind up on cable. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye, uh, All right, my love. This morning's Health Watch, the moment uh, we've all been waiting for this morning. Harry's colonoscopy, it's actually happening right now, live. So we want to take you back now to Katie Kirk, who's standing by with Harry at New York Presbyterian Weill Cornell Medical Center. She and Dr. Mark Pochapin are ready to take us through the procedure. Harry, not going to be able to talk to us at this point, guys. Well, Harry's actually uh, doing well. He said, just said to me, Erica, you know, this makes me really happy. So I think the drugs have kicked in <laughs> full blast. And Mark is in the middle, Erica, of the procedure. Harry, how you doing? How you feeling? I'm doing great now. Okay. But to be able to, you know, sort of come to at the, uh, toward the end of the procedure and be able to talk, talk to Mark, to talk to Dr. Pachekin and say, this have him say this all looks great yeah you the know, good news is harry's colon is clean as a whistle mm -hmm. first of all so you inserted the endoscope all the way to the end of the of the colon and the real test or the real procedure is when you check through the camera on the way out of the colon right mark right what we're doing now is we're looking at all the little folds here you can see it on the monitor that as we pull back the scope and we put a little bit of air, and actually we're using carbon dioxide because it gets absorbed very quickly, mm -hmm. we could see the intricacies of the colon, see this normal blood vessel pattern. And actually, as I withdraw it this side, you could see there's a little bit of a bluish blush just in the middle. That's actually Harry's liver. Which oh, really? Is, yeah, we're at what's called the hepatic flexure, which hello, is Hello, right. liver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not many people get to say hello to the liver. <laughs> and um, as I withdraw now, we're coming across the transverse colon. The transverse colon usually has a little bit more of a triangular appearance. You can almost see that as I oh, look at that. come uh -huh. back. Yeah. And actually, what's interesting, there's no bone or cartilage in there. That's all muscle just contracting. And that's what keeps the um, fluid from coming too quickly out of the body. And the colon's job is really just to remove fluid. It's basically the dryer of the body. It's the sewage system. And it's, this is just sort of cleansing it so you get right. a better look. Uh -huh. And you also have to yeah. look for flat polyps as well. Exactly. Sometimes polyps protrude out like little warts, I guess, right? But That's, sometimes you know, they're flat. Katie, what we like to say is they don't always present themselves well. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> well, they could be hidden behind folds or they could you be very difficult to see. <laughs> I'm a little worried. I told your wife, Andrea, I'd be, you know, if you said anything inappropriate, I'd make sure to... <laughs> yeah. She was, a, she was afraid I was going to tell too much of the truth. <laughs> I want to show you an interesting technology. It's called narrowband imaging, or NBI. And what it is is basically a blue light that enhances the vascular wow. pattern. Wow. And you see if there was, you could almost see each of those little dots are actually the glands in the colon. 
and you could see the blood vessels. If there was a very flat polyp or difficult to see polyp, we had you a better really way see it then, of right? seeing it. Yeah. Exactly. Our now that thing we just passed, that's not a polyp. No, nope, that's just nope. That's just a little residue. Um, uh -huh. it, the colon will always have a little bit of mucus or residue in it, but um, you could see how clean the prep works in terms of making sure that we can see all the lining. About a year ago, there was some controversy that some doctors were missing polyps or flat polyps, and it really came down to the fact that they were doing the procedure too quickly. Is that right, Mark? That's right. You know, there are certain quality indicators. One of them is mm. the withdrawal time, how long you go from yeah. the very beginning of the colon to the end. And the minimum amount of time should be six minutes. Um, we strive here, we look at the clock to be at least eight minutes. And the longer you take looking around these folds, the better you're able to see these little small polyps or flat lesions. You could see how, if you're not careful looking around these different folds, that things could hide. See how yeah. you push forward and you look around these folds here, right. and then you pull back. And when you're getting a colonoscopy, you should ask your doctor, how experienced are you and how long do you take to do the procedure, right, Mark? Exactly. To make sure you get somebody who really knows what he or she is doing. The other quality indicators, by the way, is how many times you actually find adenomas. And the uh, baseline standard polyps is 50. Polyps or cancerous polyps? Which are the precancerous right. polyps. The adenomas. polyps that you really yeah. want to find and remove. And the baseline is about 15% to 25%. 15% for women and 25% for men. So they're out there. We just have to make sure we take our time and do a quality exam. Good prep, slow withdrawal, and of course, making sure the patient's safety and comfort is always present. And, and a colonoscopy should be done every 10 years. You can do a flexible sigmoidoscopy, but that only really views half the colon, right? It's that's sort of exactly like getting right. a mammogram yeah. on one breast. Not, not many people do flexible sigmoidoscopies anymore. If you're already in the colon, you may as well look at the whole colon. There are certain groups, like African Americans, that tend to have more polyps on the right side of the colon. So, you know, it's, it's, it's the best way to look. It's really very straightforward. And yeah. how many feet is this? The colon. Remember anywhere from between? biology class? From high school? What is it? Is it 12 or 18? It's, no, four to six feet is the colon, but right. the small intestine can be 20 feet. Okay. And you have apparently a very long colon. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And by the way, I just want to point out I'm wearing my splash shield because I was told I was going to be in the splash zone and I could have gone all day without knowing that, Mark. <laughs> Sorry about but that, thank Katie. You. Uh, anyway, Erica, we'll come back to you when Harry's done and Mark is finished with the procedure and give you the final uh, prognosis about how it went. All right, sounds good. We'll check in with you then. But good to hear Harry say that, that he heard that everything looks good and good to hear the doctor say that. Let's check in again for the final results. You know, I don't know what it was when I was going under, I could hear deep purple and dark side of the moon. <laughs> and somehow it just was kept going through my mind. Uh, Dr. Pacheco, I really want to ask this question because we talked about insurance covering a lot. Right. But there are 50 million people in this country who don't have insurance. Are there ways they can go about getting screened? Absolutely. There are a lot of programs out there. They should talk to the American Cancer Society. They should talk to their local health center. Like in New York City, the Department of Health here provides free screenings through the hospital wow. health center. Wow. Yes. So th there are ways to find places there to get the screening. There are a lot of community outreach Absolutely. places in a variety of cities all over the country. Yeah, and you know what? You do have a good si bedside manner. Really? Yeah. Thanks. Very so maybe, impressed. you know, the TV thing doesn't work out here. You can go back to medical school. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we do want to reiterate the message here because I know all three of us feel it's very important, and that is early detection can save lives. You can prevent this disease before it becomes cancer by mm. having a screening colonoscopy. And if you don't want to do it, I always say do it for the people you love. Yeah. Do it for the people who depend on you because they want you to be a around for a long, long time. And I know you feel better having done this. Two things, a, a tremendous peace of mind that comes through this. And the other thing then is it sort of abs it sort of raises the ante a little bit and says, you know what, this is a reminder to continue and maybe even do a better job of taking care of yourself. So well, that's a very good point, the health and wellness message, you know, keeping yourself fit, watching your diet, eating correctly, and making sure you do all the things to prevent the diseases. That's We're in this right. mode of going to doctors when you're sick, but really you want to go yeah. when you're well. Exercise, yeah. eating well, those it's can so prevent this disease. Thank Harry, thank you. And you're thank in good you health, so much, Harry. dude. That's the best all thank right. you. I feel very close to you, Harry. Thank you. <laughs> Boy, the things you see when you work as a reporter. <laughs> anyway, back to you guys. Poor, Kate, yeah. poor Katie's got a little PTSD this morning. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was say, and the things your colleagues see. Exactly. <laughs> it was all about showing people this is nothing to be afraid or ashamed yeah. of, Harry. Piece of cake, right? Nothing to it. Nothing uh. to it. Thank you, Harry.